Hello Facebook, hello YouTube. Very sorry if I kept you waiting. You would not believe the chaos behind the scenes. <laughs> anyway, we're all right now and we're all friends. So that is good. And sincere apologies to those of you who joined me an hour ago, got the time completely wrong. And as I was just being reminded by our friends on Instagram here, of course the clocks go forward at the weekend. So it's gonna be even more confusing. I have to put two times in my diary. Whenever I do anything, I have to write UK time and then Kenya time, because at the moment we're three hours ahead. But anyway, we are all here. And it's gonna be a really interesting live today because we're gonna be talking about holiday packing, wardrobe care, and the dreaded moth. Anybody else been completely ravaged by those chewy little critters you know, you get all your lovely winter woolies out and you hold them up and they're just like lace sometimes. And they always seem to go for the best things. They go for the most expensive cashmere, the nicest, softest silks, all of that. It's just a nightmare. Anyway, I have discovered over the years the one thing that works against moths. The one thing. Thank you very much. Clocks go forward on Mother's Day. Excellent on Sunday. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Oh, right. Well, I think before much ado and before anything else, touch wood, can hopefully go wrong, we should introduce our guest, who is Julia D from Total Wardrobe Care back in the UK, who's going to be joining me. Before we get going, I should say she has given us all a Liz Loves discount on everything on her website, which is brilliant. So Liz Loves, all in capitals, all one word, you know the drill, that gets you 10% off. Um, and that is actually just excluding the subscriptions and something called a free just steamer, which I'm not sure what is, but I'm sure she'll tell us what else um, is, uh, is applicable there because she has got the most amazing things when it comes to packing. So let me see if Julia is in the house and can chat to us. Uh, Julia, now I can see you as Julia Lomas, is that correct? Don't want to accept the wrong person. Might get somebody. <laughs> that would just make my day, wouldn't it, really? Start talking about something completely different. Um, so can you just check, maybe Rachel, I know that you're on Facebook. Can you just ping me a message, my love, and just let me know if that is the right person to ex um, accept the live? Because I'm expecting Julia D from Total Wardrobe Care. Now, some of the things that uh, I first got to know Julia about, actually, before the packing, and she's got really brilliant packing ideas. If you are heading off perhaps for an Easter break or a mini break now that travel is so much easier and opening up, I know lots of us are planning on heading away perhaps for the Easter holidays or for a mini break, and packing is always one of those things that kind of gets me. I quite like packing because there's that sense of anticipation, and I'm always wondering whether you should fold or roll clothes. What do you reckon? I'm sure Julie will have the answer to that. Um, and what I don't like, though, is unpacking. And I have to say, I'm one of these people, I don't know what, what, what you hear, um, what you think about it, but I, whenever I get anywhere, even if it's just for one night, I have to unpack everything. My whole suitcase, everything is out, put away, suitcase put away, like in a cupboard or under the bed or something, so I can't see it, just so I sort of feel settled. Whereas my kids are completely different. You know, they'll come away for, I don't know, two or three weeks maybe in the summer. And, you know, even by the last week, they are still living out of a suitcase and it's just stuff everywhere. Um, okay, so Julia, you say that you're here. I can't see you on the request to join. Oh, there we go, except hopefully this will work. <laughs> come on, it has to work, it has to. After all we've been through today, Hello, Julia. Hello. You are Hi. there at last. Oh my goodness, what a, what a crazy, crazy day. And I'm sorry for getting the time wrong. <laughs> you did it so well. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Where are you talking to us from? Um, Happy Hampshire. And is the sun out? Happy Hampshire country. Yes, and it's gorgeous. And we're in a, uh, it's called the Old Station Yard. So it was an old station and they've been made into um, industrial units. And we just have views of fields and trees and yes, loveliness. Fantastic. It sounds idyllic. Now I have got here 
lots of your lovely things which my daughter Brella brought out in her suitcase which I was absolutely thrilled to unpack because I didn't know you and I first connected over moths yeah we did and I'd love to go on and talk about moths because it's such a problem and you have the solution you are the lady the genius lady with the solution that I have had in my home for years because I absolutely love it but you have got this fantastic brand all about packing and packing well. Excuse me, I'm just reaching for some of these lovely things. And they are an absolute revelation. So you have these packing cubes, okay, which look like this. And honestly, they have transformed my packing. I love, love, love them. They are... I think it's a bit like Marmite, isn't it? It's a sort of a love it or, or don't love it. But every time I've asked somebody to try them, um, once they try them, then I think they're pretty much hooked. Completely hooked. I'm going to come home and I'm going to order more because my packing is just going to be absolutely transformed. So basically, what arrived in my suitcase was a set of these. So you've got these amazing packing cubes and they're, they're sort of breathables and slightly see-through so you can see what's inside. So I've got, for example, um, I've got this one here. This has got all my sort of Liz Loves things that I'm currently trying. So that's all sort of nicely separated. And what's really clever is that you've got smaller ones that pack inside the bigger ones. So I've got here, this is a, whoops, this is a slightly smaller one here. This is actually full of anti-mosquito stuff that I'm going to be talking about later in the week. Very important. So you see they all sort of fit in here. And then this one, this little one, this has got all my Delilah makeup in it that I've been using at the moment. So again, they, they sort of fit in. So you can take a whole set away with you. And when you... When you go away, I've read on your website that you say sort of put all your, you know, knickers and underwear and stuff in one and then that just goes into a drawer and then all your, you know, swimwear in another uh, and your, your sweaters in another. So they're already sorted. You literally just hoit them out of your bag and pop them in a drawer or a cupboard. And I yes. think, I, yes. I really, really think they're genius. This is another one here that I've got, another little small one. What, what have you got there? What have you got in yours? So, um, I put all my um, underwear in one. <coughs> Excellent. And my nighty. And uh, so that's, that's... So you can one. keep I it separate. You know, you keep it separate from shoes and everything yes. that you don't want rolling around in your suitcase, you know, with your nightdress. It's so easy when you unpack because um, I think you need at least two sets. But yeah. when I do a, a long trip, I have four sets but I can do a weekend with two sets. Yeah. And you just uh, plonk out for three, three to six bags, and uh, that's it. You put them in the drawers. You don't actually have to take to take these out when they're in the drawers. So, no. you know, this is pants and bras are in there. Yep, yep, and then just in one like that. Move on, yeah. Especially if you're doing a short hop and you're doing one night here and one night yeah, there. Yeah, you're not constantly you're not unpacking. unpacking packing they're brilliant and you know i i went down to nairobi at the weekend because my son's birthday and so it was just a short hop a short stay stayed a couple of nights and i did exactly that i had you know my bits and bobs in one my toiletries in another my nighty and toothbrush and things in another one and i didn't have to do the whole unpacking thing i could just literally take this out and um and, you know, it, it all felt very neat and, and very organised. And then when it came to repacking, it's awful, isn't it, when you have to leave a holiday or leave somewhere that you're really enjoying. It's like, oh, I've got to go and pack. You know, you just, you just shove these back in your suitcase. It's really, really good. I never thought that I would be raving quite so um, <laughs> positively uh, and getting so excited about packing cubes. But they're genius. Really, really genius. So, so thank you, and thank you very much for our discount. I've, I'm, I'm totally going to be using mine. So in this one, for example, whoops, I've got, these are all the, the vitamins that I'm currently taking. So again, it will neatly stash. Yes, they're, you know, well, they're, you know, they're, they're things like packets. I've got my Natriflex here. I've got my, you know, my little sachet of Youth and Earth and my eye vitamins. I've got my collagen. I've got my Better You spray. 
you know, and normally they'd just be kind of rolling around or they'd be in a kind of a sponge bag mixed with other stuff. But here, just so neat. Love it. Really love it. I've got one for, um, for jewellery. So all my fun earrings for if you're going away, um, you know, on a nice summer holiday, you just Great. want lots of cheap fun earrings for your swimming pool and around the pool and your long beads, etc. And a pair of scissors, that's always a good one. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, and a fan. Girls that get a little bit hot. And a fan, very good. <laughs> and I guess you could have one. I always take a first aid kit. I guess that's kind of the, the mum in me. Always take, you know, plasters and germaline and painkillers and, you know, insect bite stuff and just just putting it away. It, it, it's, it's great. Funnily enough, there's just a question that's come up or a comment on Instagram to say, anybody else use lists for packing? Who's this saying that they love to tick things off? Well, that is very appropriate because not only do you have these amazing cubes and, you know, please don't buy them all because I definitely um, want to, to get another set. Just, just so that you see that's actually what they sort of look like. You very kindly sent me some notes there. You can go and have a look on the website. Yeah. Um, but you also oh, have... Yes, Say again? Oh, there's, oh that, that's how they come. Yes, they come in just one neat little bag, all packaged up together. In a, a, a biodegradable uh, bag, you'd be pleased to know. Brilliant. With instructions. Fantastic. Love it. You thought of everything. And look at this. I don't know how we get these. Are these on your website or do, they, or do we buy them? They're packing yes, lists. You, just download them. you can download yeah, them. Yeah. It's a free download, yeah, everybody. You know yeah, completely free. Just print them off. Give, give, give us your website address. Uh, Totalwardrobecare.co.uk. Brilliant. Totalwardrobecare.co.uk. So, this, for those who love a list, like me, love a good list. And you can tick them off and you've got everything here. So you, and all the things that you might forget, you know, sleep masks, earplugs, you know, even practical things like your cash, your, your foreign currency, your passport, your itinerary, a map, really important. And then all the basics, underwear, socks, vests, sleepwear, dresses, skirts, suits, blazers, trousers, medical history, list of medication, car insurance. You know, I mean, it's, it's just genius because you know then that all you're covered. You're covered. That took ages to develop. All of us in the office were thinking for weeks and weeks about all the things we might forget. Yeah. But uh, I think we've... You've even got, got tweezers. <laughs> tweezers and tissues. I always forget Very my tweezers. Important. Portable hard drive. Business cards. I mean, uh, great. Umbrella. <laughs> Reading glasses. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> very, very organised. Um, and then the other thing that you've got on your website, which talk about organisation, is again really inspiring me to come home and sort my wardrobe out because you have these, I mean, you've got so many brilliant things on your website. I love all your packaging, actually, the, the, the branding, the, the pink and white, it's very chic. Um, this is for valeting and storage. And if you look at what these are, these in here are these things and this is you know when you go into really smart designer shops you know like for knitwear and it's all beautifully stacked up and it's not it leaning over and it's not all squished into one place well you've got instructions on how you can basically here's one I prepared earlier you know fold your sweaters oops it's slipping off obviously because I'm holding it up and then you just slot these into a shelf and you can stack up so many beautifully and then just pull them out because there's a little handle here you just pull them out and there's your fantastically pre-folded sweater that you can find easily and it hasn't got all squished and scrumpled up I mean how, well, how... that was in... yes that, that was inspired uh, many years ago um when I started out on my career, I was working part-time at um, Harrods. Ooh. And uh, that would be one of my jobs first thing in the morning was to make the all the jumpers look neat and tidy. And uh, they would give me um, a Vogue <laughs> magazine. <laughs> yeah. And I was so creative that I had to do, use this magazine and go around the whole of the, the, the display 
uh, folding these blooming sweaters oh. and it sort of stayed with me so here we are 30 years later I thought I'm having my own folding palette <laughs> yes a folding palette that is such a genius idea so tell us what was your journey then I'm always fascinated to hear for, for female founders building great businesses how did you come to be doing what you're doing now well I wanted to be a fashion designer but I was very practical and I, I sewed and was always sewing, busy, busy, busy sewing. And, you know, I'd, uh, I'd beg mum for, a, for an old sheet that I could cut up and, 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 then, and then putting it in the jam pot and dyeing it and playing with tie-dye, etc. Yeah. And then chopping my own patterns and copying this and on the floor. And, and, um, and I had a sewing machine. That was my, one of my uh, presents, uh, birthday presents. And um, just couldn't help myself just sewed and sewed and sewed and sewed and so I did a fashion design art college and then through a friend through a friend I heard about a job in um Bahrain of all, all places to uh because uh, this was in the 80s and um they didn't really I think they only had one shop there but a very big expat community mm -hmm. and so they were trotting off into the fabric soup to buy wonderful materials but then there was nobody with the european eye to help them get get the garments made so uh this uh, lovely friend of a friend of a friend contacted me at age 23. I skipped off to Bahrain, completely naive. I didn't really know what I was doing or where yeah. I was going. And, um, and I had a team of Thai and Filipino seamstresses, and I learned a lot from them. Mm. Gosh, I learned a lot. So it was very multicultural, which obviously you'll, you'll understand. And so, mm. you know, I had to learn... Um, Things like uh, what's a press stud in, in Thai? Oh, it's gudumbak. Yes. A gudumbak. And, and, and how do you... Gudumbak. <laughs> and how do you say uh, below the knee in Arabic? Oh, uh, I think it's uh, a knee is rukba. So <laughs> all these various sort of phrases of our multicultural, multiracial... Yeah, um, brilliant workroom and it was it was great fun and gosh what a learning curve and I learned an awful lot through uh the lovely expat uh, community there yeah and and with and the local community too because in Bahrain it was quite uh westernized in a way and so underneath the abaya the black abaya there'd be the most amazing creations and they'd come in with their Vogue magazine and they'd say, I want this Dior number with bows. And it was the shoulder pad time and the V-backs and the big bows and the big peplums and the trains. Gosh. And the, uh, it was 80s, which, of course, was boom time and party yeah. time. And they were very, very, very sociable times and, uh, and great fun. And then, of course, uh, unfortunately, the Iraq-Iran War, 1990, mm. it all collapsed. And I came home with my tail between my legs and mm. <laughs> signed on the dole <laughs> at uh, Stratton Dole office. <laughs> oh, poor you. <laughs> very, very shocking. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, really, it was, it was a ghastly time then for everybody. And, uh, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to get a job and uh, get a part-time job, which I did in Harrods. And, and then I thought, mm. yes, I can, I can do alterations and repairs because people weren't buying new things. It yeah. was such a recession. Yeah. Um, so I started altering, tailoring and altering. And I've done that now for about 30 years. So I still have a little alteration tailoring place in Battersea. I have nice. Girls. I used to have a team of 40, but... Uh, I'll have to come and see you. I'll have to bring you my alterations because my studios are not far in, uh, in South London. Uh, that was... Uh, but I've scaled it right down. I got married and yeah. inherited a lovely large family. And, and so... Uh, and then my husband joined um, to put a wardrobe care and my... Mm. Um, his daughter, who's our manager. And, oh, and we sort of really grown total wardrobe care and that's sort of become the second passion yeah so a real family run business so, built from the heart with close. experience and we <laughs> chatted i don't know whether it was about a year ago or whatever um about your amazing moth repellent it's kind of more than a moth repellent it's 
the most extraordinary thing, um, in a nutshell, and then let's let's talk specifically about it because I would absolutely urge everybody to try this. It's it's really genius. It's a little pellet of um, it's not a pesticide, but it's it's a natural substance that basically sterilizes the moth. So they can't then breed, because actually it's not the moth, is it, that eat the fabric, it's the larvae that they lay. It's the babies. The babies. Yeah, the naughty babies. Yeah, there the we go. The naughty There's, babies, yeah. So for those on Instagram can it's see, little. it's a little kind of white, like a little kind of aspirin type thing, tablet, in, in, yeah. a little tablet in a little card holder. And I've got these, I've got these at home, I've got them in my wardrobe, I've got them in every bedroom. Um, and what happens is it's really clever because it's an electrostatic property, isn't it? That has this sort of, is it like a pheromone that attracts the moth and then they pick up this special natural yes. ingredient on their, the on their little feet? Yeah, the pheromone has been added. I mean, it was um, inspired by, uh, I think it was uh, like a Venus flytrap is a very, very slippery and uh, the scientists wanted to uh, replicate this. Well, it comes from um, a leaf in Brazil, which has got this um, uh, sort of slightly waxy feel to it, which is very slippery. Yeah. And that's what's got this electrostatic property. And um, it, it, for instance, it's, well, it's called canuba wax, and it's yeah. added to coat Smarties or to make lipsticks shiny. It's it's a great natural product. Yeah, I, I, um, I know canuba wax well, and in fact, if you look at a lot of skincare products and yeah. things like lipsticks, you'll see canuba wax, this natural wax that's listed as, as one of the ingredients. So what they've done is uh, the scientists, two, two clever scientists, which I, I believe you know. I do know uh, them, yeah. From, uh, yeah, Southampton University, and they, they worked on this because if they can impregnate the canuba wax with a pheromone, not just a moth pheromone, they've done it for, for um, agriculture, really, yeah. but this was sort of a byproduct. And they in, um, included the, the female moth pheromone. So it makes the male moths... Uh, attracted to the fragrance, so they fly down, think yeah, they're the... going to get in touch with the lady moth, yep. and then they get all their wings covered, and then they fly off, and they find the lady moth, and she thinks he's a girl, so she's not interested. She won't. She won't mate. She with won't him. mate with him. And then, no. So what it does is it really cancels out the breeding process. And then other male moths jump on him. They get their wings covered, and then the whole system perpetuates itself. And so what happens is that they all stop breeding, and it's all in a lovely, friendly way, and nobody yeah. gets hurt. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're not using pesticides. We're not killing moths. We're just stopping the breeding cycle, because what happens is when the, the male moth jumps on the lady moth, and then they have all the larvae, and they hatch out, and they lay the little larvae eggs, somewhere you know where there's lots of delicious fibers to eat and as we've talked about before they love all the fine fibers in life don't they they always go for the cashmere and the special oh, yes. wools and the silks the and uh, and then as the larvae grow and turn into moths they munch their way through and that's why you get the moth holes so it's not actually moth hole is it it's larvae holes really that we're talking about yeah uh, those babies eating and the lady moth is looking for somewhere dark undisturbed with a food source so of course when your jumpers are coming off and now is the right time to sort of pay pay attention because we all take our jumpers off and we think well am i going is it going to be a cold spell in two weeks time should i put these away now should i wash them can i get one more wear out of them and then what happens is they go to the back of the wardrobe and then you forget about them yeah and what what happens is you take the jumpers off. You can't help it. You've got skin and hair particles, uh, minuscule food splats, and that is like the dream topping on your garments, which then uh, encourages the lady moth to go in and, and, and lay her eggs. That makes such total sense because I've always wondered why it is when you put away your favourite sweater and as you say there might be a little minuscule little bit of droplet of food or a couple of crumbs that you haven't noticed 
and it looks clean, so you fold it up, you put it away. When you go to take it out again, right there, very visible, is the hole, the moth hole or the larvae hole. <laughs> because she has discovered that little bit of yumminess spilt on your oh, lovely yes. woolen jumper or favourite cardi. So it's never sort of round the back down here where you can't see it. It's always literally kind of here where it's very, very visible. So practically then, if we are, you know, coming out of our winter woolies and we're thinking about, you know, hopefully warmer times are here to stay, should we then be washing everything? And some people say put it in the freezer or put it in vacuum bags. What, what, what do you think about storage? Yes. So um, collecting lots of sort of knowledge from everybody, um, putting it in the bags. I was a vacuum bag. I was told by a dry cleaner, don't do that because you destroy the fibres. Ah, interesting. Because what you're doing is you're sucking all the air out and you're bending them and breaking them, basically. Makes sense. So it's yeah, not just, yeah. good for longevity. It's not actually good for pillows and duvets or anything, although I know it reduces space. Yeah, it can be he helpful said, as space saving. Mm. Don't do that. And um, he had a, a, a royal warrant, so I guess he knew what he was talking okay. about. Okay. Um, and then as for freezing... Yes, that will kill the insects. But what, what when it defrosts, let's say, mm. um, you've still got the food sprats and the hair particles and, and, and um, yeah. skin particles on it. So uh, you actually do need to just clean it to remove uh, the, the, the yumminess that they want so or that is attracting them. So really, it's best to wash or dry clean and then fold and pack away in a garment bag. We have some lovely knitwear bags. With yeah, you do. Garment bags. Mm. Um, I mean, even a pillowcase folded in half. Yeah. Some acid-free tissue, just something that um, uh, you could put them in plastic, but plastic doesn't breathe, and after all, we're all trying to move away yeah. from that now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but even, as I say, a pillowcase, uh, some empty pillowcases would, you mm. know, if, if um, that would work. Yeah. And then on top, you can sort of pop a, a little drawer sachet. Um, yeah, you've got lovely ones. Or if you've got lavender in the garden, you can make your own lavender bags. Does that work? Do, 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 does lavender actually stop moth? It's... Um, a strong smell that the lady moth doesn't like a strong smell and so that's why sort of the victorians would do the season swap the put the the new paper in and then they would replace all the lavender and throughout the world uh, people have had got their own ways of doing mm. it in north americans have used cedar wood chinese use made chang lemongrass the indians have used patchouli mm. um, and the yeah. ancient greeks and romans had laurel crowns in their hair so laurel is it, it's anything that really is, has got quite a strong smell people say conkers but conkers aren't very pretty um, no. so i think you can actually make your own um uh, potpourri from from hedgerows um, nice. but the thing is it does need to be refreshed yeah yeah of course because the the, the smell goes and that's not going yeah. to kill off or stop the life cycle of the moth that's simply a nice scented deterrent yeah. you mentioned there about the royal warrant and i was really intrigued last time we spoke that you supply these anti-moth little pellets that work so incredibly well to uh the royal palaces to the museums that are having things is it like the the queen's coronation robes which are obviously one of a kind well, it's it's not me okay <laughs> 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 okay, There's but, a tray, uh, but it's the same thing. It, it's the same pellet that goes in. It's the exact same product. Um, they're called uh, conservators, and uh, they, they they use these by the box load. Yeah. So um, they they do what they call is um, integrated pest management control, and they have um, a pheromone sticky trap, mm -hmm. which. Uh, it, look, lots of people are doing the traps now, and yep. then when they're full up, that's what they look like, which is gosh, so it's ugly. just like a, a little so box full of full of little moths. <laughs> sticky, sticky trap with impregnated with the female pheromone, and again, the male moth will he will get stuck and die. So 
the, the, it's a sort of, what they'll start off by doing is they will spray. If they know they've got a problem, mm-hmm. uh, they'll, they'll do a, um, they'll use pyrethrum mm-hmm. um, or pyrethroids. Uh, ours is a natural pyrethrum. Does it come from chrysanthemums? Yes, from Kenya, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, pyrethrum then, is used a lot in Kenya as a natural pest control. Well, it, it's a magical, uh, it's got magical properties, hasn't it? The insects mm. just don't like it because it blocks up their airwaves. So they've got a chance to, to fly away from it. Yeah. And if they hang around, unfortunately, they die. So the area gets treated. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, a pheromone tra- trap goes on one side of the room and then the decoy goes on the other side of the room yeah. and then it's a sort of unfortunately it's a rinse and repeat you have to do this every six to twelve weeks depending on your problem yeah and i you know i have it literally in my diary when i need to to put the new pellets in because i've lost so much stuff to moth holes i mean it, it's it's just it makes me cry thinking about it and I, I remember researching this um, a while ago and, and I do know the original researchers in Southampton and I was with them and actually I invested with them um, in agricultural products to use a natural bio insecticide rather than having to spray pesticides on everything so I'm quite quite you know aware of that and have been quite involved with that um, but the fact that you can stop this life cycle you can just stop you may actually see more moths around mightn't you because you're actually letting them fly around because it's not the moth that's the problem yeah. it's the larvae so you don't really care about moths i mean and they're the little tiny ones they're not you know great big things they're just little things that buzz around but what you don't want them to do is mate and lay the larvae so moths in themselves are okay but if you can stop them kindly you're just meaning that he's he's not going to you know, not not gonna. I don't know what what's the polite way to <laughs> say it. He's not going to be able to mate <laughs> with his lady moth. That's yes. kind of. She's just going to say no. Push off. Um, and yeah. uh, and so, it's um, something that you need to continue, and you need to do it uh, all year round, really. Right. Because uh, because we have our houses set, um, hermetically sealed and, and yeah. centrally heated, it's a lovely, cosy, warm environment for all them. All the time. Because naturally, they. They come out in May, and the, the, the natural season is May to October. Right, but, good you know, to know. Nine pounds, the little discount, and, um, yeah. and, and, and you know, it's, have one of these every six to eight weeks. It's like a little insurance policy. It's a really, same with that. yeah, really, really good, good thing to get going with. We obviously talked about clothes there, but, you know, many of us have got, you know, expensive carpets and rugs, cushions. Mm-hmm you know curtains is it going to have a similar effect should we be having one in our in our sitting room as well oh yes yes i i once um had this uh, customer and she she was almost in tears and she was terribly terribly clean and she had an army of people helping her and she couldn't understand mm. why she kept seeing these moths and she had this beautiful uh black linen sofa and because it's uh, dark, that they were attracted. So they were flying through the windows, which you can't uh, help, yeah, you know, sure. through the summer. If you put yeah. the lights on, they fly in. Just come but in. But they were making home in this in this sofa, and behind the cushions and underneath. Oh, they loved it. Yeah. <laughs> and we we found out that that was it. And then I I visited um, a lady. She has a jewelry shop. And I just actually I popped in to get these earrings. I saw them in the window, They're and nice. I said, "Oh, I've seen you at one of the fairs." And uh, I said, "I'm Moth Lady," and she always jumped on me and said, "I need you. Look at my walls." And because she painted her walls black, and the moths were sitting on the walls, it was quite extraordinary. So. Um, yeah. Well, you've got to paint the walls white. <laughs> so wherever you've got fabric, yes, basically, are. so wool carpets, and of course they love all the expensive stuff. They don't like the synthetic nylons or all yes. of that. They, you know, anything that's wool, no. silk, cashmere, lovely. You know, we'll, we'll, ha- we'll have a go with yes. that. If it's got any little, you know, food crumbs or remnants or stains on it, so much the better. <laughs> and the critters, they'll just pet munch, hair. munch their, yeah, they'll just munch their way through. Pet hair, that's another thing. Do they like that? Yes, yes. 
yes because it's a, a natural product so it's the keratin in all the natural uh, products i have one poor lady and she um she had them all coming up and down through the floorboards and she couldn't understand why and eventually it was so bad that they lifted the floorboard and they found a, a workman had left a glove a suede glove and it was just a heaving mass oh, and unless they had lifted that they would they would have just continued and continued and continued well they, they do seem to breed in pockets don't they it's interesting that one, one of your bases yeah. is in uh, Battersea in South London because I've got friends who live in Battersea and particularly in the in the in the apartment blocks there they say that there's yeah. huge infestations and they just go through you know and they've said they've tried everything they've tried all these really horrible toxic sprays and you know, the, in the past, when you could buy mothballs, which are now you know outlawed because the naphthalene is such a dangerous um, chemical, you know they would use all this, and they'd be living with this, you know, breathing all this this noxious stuff in, and it still wouldn't work because, of course, the moths become immune to it. They get used to it. They build up a resistance. It's like any of these, you know, pesticides yeah. or whatever. You have to use ever more yeah. and more and more because nature does what nature does best and just builds up a natural immunity, natural resistance. And, you know, South London does seem to be particularly bad. So this, you know, would be really important, wouldn't it? Yes, there are pockets, you're right. Um, I, uh, I had a lovely Italian boy uh, working for me and he, he used to go off and do the fairs. He was terribly charming and used to sell to all the ladies. <laughs> and I sent him off to a fair <laughs> in Yorkshire and he came home and he said, uh, Julie, I'm not going there again. He said, oh, no, I don't like it. It's too cold and they don't have moths. And they don't have moths. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Too cold go and they them. don't have moths. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, is it true then? So is southern England more at risk because we have a warmer climate and, and that's where the moths yeah. like to be? Yes. Um, the south, uh, southeast. Is, mm. is really the hot spot, sort of London and, and the and the surrounding areas. Maybe because it's more highly po populated. Maybe because I don't know the the houses are, are maybe older. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. Lots of water. They live in trees. Uh, maybe because it's more more populated. Yeah. And slightly warmer, I think. Yeah. Gosh, fascinating. Well, I thank thought, you. I it then this book. Poor lady had just eaten a mothball and she said she had to go to A&E and have it. But she was a child. A child, and yeah, swallowed a mothball. Terrible. And mothballs, they're, they're banned, but I do know that you can get them, you know, illicitly on, you know, some of these shopping websites, which will remain nameless. And it's a really, yes. really bad idea because what they've discovered, I mean, not only are they incredibly poisonous, so if a child does get hold of them, um, you know, it can be very, very... They can be very, very poorly, but they've linked the fumes to cot death. I was looking at some research really? on this a while ago. Yeah, and that really scared me because, you know, I'm in my 50s, so I can remember, you know, way back when, when they weren't banned. And of course, they are very effective. And you can remember that mothball smell. I mean, it reminds me of my grandma's house because everything was just covered in, <laughs> in mothballs. That's kind of what you did. And of course, the, the family christening robes, which are passed down from generation to generation, and because they're so precious and we didn't want them to be infested with moth, they were all stored in mothballs. And of course, you know, you take out these precious garments that, you know, really don't yeah. smell great. And, you know, you're putting them near a newborn baby. I mean, just oh. terrible. So it's really, really important. Anybody <coughs> tempted to use mothballs, please don't. They are, they are really, really nasty, noxious chemicals, and there's a very good reason, you know, why they've been banned. Yes. Mm. No, let's stick to everything as natural as we possibly yeah, can. Yeah, <laughs> we, can, we, we can be on, on the positive. And all your things smell lovely, actually. I know that you're using... Are you using Mei Chang in some of your sprays and your little sachets? Yes, yes. Yes, a lovely sort of lemon, fresh lemon grass. Yeah, smell. it's beautiful. A patchouli, clove, laurel, rosemary. Yeah, yeah. and I, nice, I, I'm, nice. you know, I think patchouli became very popular as a spice um, in Victorian times because the lovely there was a real fashion for, for sort of paisley prints and all these textiles coming in from the spice trade from from India, and they would all come in and of course they'd been preserved with lots of patchouli. 
and to keep the insects away. And so patchouli yeah. suddenly became really popular because, you know, everyone was saying, oh my goodness, what's that incredible smell? You know, we love patchouli. And then we started <laughs> as a country, the UK started to import patchouli oil and, you know, and have never sort of looked back. It's a key fragrance ingredient, patchouli. Love it. Julia, I, it's so fascinating. I'm going to take another good look at your website. I'm definitely going to download the packing lists. Um, please, everybody, if you're late to the party, do take a look at the amazing packing cubes. Please don't buy them all because I've got one set here and I need at least, I reckon, a couple more. Um, what I love about these, you could actually keep these in your drawer. If you're somebody who travels regularly, and hopefully we are now all going to be allowed to travel again, um, you know, you could keep these as, as really nice, neat drawer liners, couldn't you? With all your bits and bobs in. And then when you do go away, you just lift them out and take it with you. And then just bring it back and pop it in your drawer. I think you'd have to be very organised for that. <laughs> well, I am quite organised. I do like a nice list. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm definitely thinking about that one. But seriously, I, I was so impressed. I, I put them to, to practice at the weekend when I travelled. And it just made life so much easier. And I think once you've used them, and I know we've seen some comments on Instagram here, once you've used those packing cubes, you never want to go back. No, exactly. So thank you for using them. Oh, my and, goodness, uh, my we pleasure. Will keep some back for you. Good, <laughs> please. Could you just pop a little little stash aside with my name on it? Because yes. <laughs> um, I really definitely want to come back to them. Julia, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. I think we've all learned so much Thank and, and so much much. practical. Before you Thank go, you. one last question for packing. Critical mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Do we fold or do we roll? Very personal. And I think T-shirts are like flat. Pants okay. are like rolled. I think very personal okay because i find i get more in a case if i roll and it doesn't seem to do. crease but you know yes. as you say it's a personal you'd be amazed thing how much you can get in these cubes so uh, oh yeah definitely to... yeah thank you and thank you very much for our discount we really appreciate thank it thank you very much liz nice thank to see you. you take care bye bye, -bye. Yeah, that's it. You have to click off, otherwise I will click everybody off. And given the debacle of earlier, I don't trust myself with any technology. Wasn't that fascinating? And I have to say, and for those of you who've seen me with Julia before, maybe 18 months ago, um, and we've also written about her in the magazine because I just think her products are excellent. It does work. And one of the things that reminded me uh, was travel wrap. Okay, so as you know, I'm a big fan of Travel Wrap, which is this lovely Scottish cashmere company, another great fab female founder, Neve, who I've podcasted with about fashion, about menopause, about so much stuff. Anyway, this is the Travel Wrap that I have with me here in Kenya. I love it because it's lighter than the other ones. I've got several of them. I get given them for birthdays and Christmas. If only my family say, what would you like? It's always, oh, could you club together and get me a travel wrap? Um, anyway, a lot of them are quite thick, which is lovely and cozy for the winter. Must make a note to self to wash them all before putting them away. Uh, this one is lighter, and I just think it's a really pretty kind of color that goes with everything. This pale blue kind of seems to work. And um, we do have a Liz Loves. It's Liz Loves 21, unusually, on travel wrap, but it gets you 10% off. And you can have your initials put on, like mine are here, which I should just remind a certain person is Liz Earl. Okay, Liz. It's not Lily Earl. No, no, this is Liz. Okay, on here. Lily has her own, uh, but this is definitely mine. But what I've noticed in the past, before I was using the moth decoy from Total Wardrobe Care, is I'd put my wraps away, as Julia said, somewhere nice and dark and cosy, and then I'd, you know, leave them for six months or whatever and come out and they'd be flipping great holes, you know, larvae holes, moth larvae holes. If that's happened to you, don't panic, because the amazing people at Travel Wrap, they have a refurbishment service. And they will recondition your travel wraps. And it's amazing. I've been up there and I've seen the ladies, and it is mostly ladies, in the factory there who are weaving, hand weaving, totally invisible. You literally can't see where the holes were. It's magic and well worth it. And they also can recondition. They take off all the bobbly bits and just make them look absolutely brand new. So if you have invested 
in a travel wrap, one of the thicker ones perhaps, and you're thinking about putting it away, what I would do is you can hand wash it, or actually, do you know, I put mine in a machine. Yeah, I do, I put it on a cold wash on a machine. Um, get it nice and clean, and then before you're allowed to send it back, because they do not want moth in their cashmere factory, you have to put it in a bag in the freezer for at least a fortnight before they'll take it back. So I've done this, I've done this with my um, cashmere in the past. You then send it back to them, and it comes back absolutely good as new. And of course, then you can start with your moth decoy to make sure that you don't get any more holes, which is great. So um, yeah, is this wool and silk? No, I think they go for everything moth. Yeah, yeah, fur, I think they do. I think it's any anything natural, anything natural and you know delicious to a, a moth larvae. They'll just munch their way through. How very annoying, anyway we have the solution and it's not going to harm them it's just going to stop them having perhaps quite such a good time in their breeding cycle <laughs> now i showed you just now um one of my cubes where's my cube gone with my makeup in and this is relevant because what did i do with it did i drop it i've got one here that's got oh i put it away in the i packed it i packed a bag within a bag so in this one I've got, uh, what have I got here? So I've got um, bits and bobs, toiletries in this one. And then in this one, I've got makeup. This is the makeup that I'm currently using. And in here, some of my absolute faves, Delilah, the Studio 10, that's a mixture in here. And so what I've been using today, and, and let me know if you've tried any of this, this is the underwear. Do you remember Rupert talking about this? Really great base. So whatever your skin type, and you know, it can be quite hot out here, so it can be quite kind of humid, you know, being a bit kind of shiny. Um, or it just gives you, if your skin is very, very dry, it gives you a very nice even base to put foundation on, or even just nothing, you just want a nice even skin tone. So it's clear, so it works for any, any skin tone, any skin type. And it's a really lovely base. It instantly makes your skin smoother. It's like a little bit of magic just over your face. So that's what I did this morning. And then I used a little bit of this blusher. This is their blusher called Lullaby, uh, which Rupert said I had to use because it was a sort of a pinky one. So I used that. Do you remember his technique, how you put it onto the center of the brush and then you just tap just to get rid of any excess. And then he was saying, use it much higher than usual. Normally I'd kind of do it here, but he was saying really pop it up here to kind of lift the face a bit. Um, so I've been using that. The reason I tell you this is that Delilah, the lovely brand, Delilah and his wife, not Delilah and his wife, Rupert and his wife founded, um, they just won an award. They have just won Best Beauty Brand from the Beauty Shortlist Awards 2022. Isn't that fantastic? Best Beauty Brand. And we have 20% off. Yeah, so congrats to Delilah. Congrats to Rupert and the team, sending you big hearts and uh, yeah, masses of good luck and good wishes for your continued success. And thank you for our generous discount. Yeah, I use that instead of a primer. So the things that I use, just so that you know on my face today, I use this um, underwear. It is actually a primer, Future Resistant Primer, it's called feels lovely on the skin really really nice and then I used I haven't got any foundation on but I use this from studio 10 and this is the concealer and this if I um, get a little mirror so I can see what I'm doing I use this under my eyes and it's a really really good concealer because it's very creamy so it doesn't dry doesn't go cakey it's one of the best I found to be honest and you can just work it into the skin. And I find that, you know, unless I'm, you know, doing a photo shoot or, you know, going out somewhere smart in the evening, I don't actually bother too much about foundation. I want to get rid of the, the dark shadows. So that's what goes under my eyes. And this, I don't know if you can see where I've used it, but it's concealer with a little dot of hyaluronic acid in the middle. Do you see? It's really, really clever. So that hyaluronic acid is very moisturizing. Better do the other side, hadn't I? Um, it's very moisturizing, so it's going to help condition the skin and plump up the skin. It doesn't drag when you apply it, and then it's got the concealer color to just take away 
the dark shadows or any areas of uneven skin tone I kind of use a little bit down here anyway so that's what I have used today um, the other thing that I really like from Delilah is this little thing this is called brow shape it's got the weeniest little brush it's like a little fairy brush look at that little teeny weeny weeny thing um, and that has just got a little bit of tint in it so one of the optical illusions that you can do to make your eyes look brighter and kind of more awake is brush your eyebrows upwards but you know if you're like me they don't stay there so this is a little bit of brow gel so you can just brush it through your um, through your brows and it will keep your eyebrows in shape and it will also impart just a little bit of color so it just takes away any of the sort of the gray hairs that you may be having and just gives a bit more definition so really simple really easy anyway those are a couple of things from Delilah that I really like and the other thing surprisingly this surprised me I didn't think I was gonna like this this is a very matte it's not a lip gloss it's like a lip tint what do they call it this one's called blossom liquid lipstick okay so it's got what did Rupert call it a, a doe foot applicator I think they call it and if I pop it on my lips you'll see it's it is really matte and I don't normally like a matte lip uh, literally a tiny tiny bit it's a really pretty pinky color what do you think and it's not drying and if you want you can pop a gloss over it or a balm or something but I have been quite impressed with that and I think it looks quite modern I think it looks quite kind of fresh and a bit funky because normally I just wear a lipstick or a gloss but actually I think it's a bit more modern to go matte so there you are so those are my makeup thoughts which were inspired by the news that they have just won best British beauty brand so many many congrats thank you for our 20% off this one by the way guys is my favorite eyeshadow palette I think I have about four of these I absolutely love it and it's called Jezebel 6602 Jezebel that's the one that I use so there you go and these are all beautifully packed now in my little cube so there we are all set to go um, right just before I go there is news of a competition that you might want to enter you may be wondering what I am drinking well non-alcoholic tell you it's too early in the day for that even here in Kenya it's too early in the day but there is a competition with Mighty Brew so Mighty Brew are this fantastic farm-based British genuine authentic kombucha brand and we've linked at Lizard Wellbeing with them for a couple of years now first we had the rose blush which was that beautiful it's like an alternative to pink champagne it's really stunning and I know you absolutely love it it's organic roses and raspberries and it's that beautiful pale pink fizz non-alcoholic um, so great for parties summer celebrations Easter Mother's Day whatever you know really really good to have some uh, as a special celebration it's a lovely thing to take if you're meeting people if you're going out to supper having drinks you know don't take alcohol take something really special really healthy uh, and then you can enjoy it and I sip it I have it chilled in a wine glass with a couple of ice cubes and I seriously don't miss the wine that I would otherwise be having so we did that I think it was last summer and then this year to celebrate um, with the, uh, the the sort of change of the seasons we've got the heritage one here which is called elderflower sec this is an empty bottle because it has all been drunk. <laughs> Very sorry about that. Uh, but you can, I did keep the foil top just to show you how beautifully it comes. It's like a proper champagne stopper and it's got the kind of the dimple you know, bottom. It's really nice, premium, beautiful. And it's got, got our logo on it. And it, they're just such a lovely, lovely brand. I know all of you love Mighty Brew. They're really special. Go and take a look. We do have a Liz Loves that gets you 10% off um, their website, but there is a chance to win. Yes, not just one, but for three winners, okay, for this competition, free to enter. There's a link on the Lizar Wellbeing website, so literally just head over there. I don't know, Rachel, whether you can pop a link up on Facebook. Sadly, we can't do the link directly on Instagram, but literally just go and have a look and you'll, you'll see it there. And that's to win a gift set, and that is a gift set of not only 
the elderflower sec, but also the rose blush, which we actually ran out of. They, they sold out because it was just so popular and it takes them ages to brew it because it's proper authentic. I think it takes about eight weeks to brew. They do a double fermentation and they don't just put in extracts of flavorings. No, no, no. I've been there. I've seen them. I've been several times actually to where they are based on their farm in Hampshire. And they are using organic rose petals. They're using organic raspberries, organic elderflowers. I mean, they really are the real deal. I, again, you know, I can't speak too highly for them. They're lovely. Peter and, and Julia, great family run business. So if you would like the chance to win, there are three prizes to win. So good, ch uh, good chances there. Um, then just head over to lizardwellbeing.com and you will see uh, a couple of other things for spring. I'm wearing my little heart-shaped uh, mangrove earrings, which are hearts, little mangrove leaves. Um, I'll just show you. These are my rose gold ones. You can get rhodium, which is the silver colour, uh, yellow gold, 24 karat. Um, vermeil thick plating. Can you see that? Can you see the little filigree where I can show you the detail? Anyway, I just say that because in fact the entire botany range is currently 20% off. So if you were looking for something, you're in time if you wanted to get something for Mother's Day. Okay, so go and check it out. It's lizardjewelry.com is where you'll find all of that. You don't need a code because it's all um, it's all on offer. Oh yes, you do. I'm so sorry. You do need a code. The code is SPRING20. Spring 20 will get you 20% off. There we are. Big thanks to Julia for joining. Don't forget that you get 10% off with Liz Loves on her um, everything there except, oh, I didn't ask her about this, the free Justima, whatever that is, <laughs> uh, and the decoy subscriptions because they're already discounted. But if you want to just get a set, give it a go, give it a try, try the travel cubes. Maybe you're going to be super organized, folding up all your sweaters before you put them away. Um, then now is a very good time to buy. I'll be back with you live at 12.30, I promise. I'm going to try and get it right. I'm going to put the right time in capital letters in my diary. Uh, and my guest is going to be Sarah Lou Morris, who is another fab female founder, totally immersed in botanicals, this time to deter biting critters. So not the critters that bite through our wardrobe and our carpets, but the ones that attack our skin. So that is mosquitoes, mozzies, all of that. She has the most amazing range. It's called Al Fresco. You might want to go and look it up before um, we chat. And she's got a lovely story. And uh, it's all interwoven with botanicals and Chelsea Physic Garden and, and all sorts. And they are lovely, lovely products. I have personally bought them and used them for years, if not, I was going to say decades. I don't know when I first started using her things, at least 10 years ago. I never travel without them. I've got them here in Kenya. I'm looking forward to having a bit of summer sunshine on holiday because I'm not on holiday. I am actually working. Um, but I'm looking forward to, you know, having some time out and when I can actually use these as well on my travels. So she is going to be with us and talking all about that and the best ways to get rid of mosquitoes. We'll also talk about care for mosquito bites. Um, so we are doing that. And then um, I have got a break because I'm going to be packing up. I'm going to be pack packing my packing cubes, uh, but I'm going to be taking a couple of weeks off Instagram. Um, I'm still going to pop on and do my stories and I'm still going to do my podcast, but I'm going to be traveling and I'm going to go to some remote places and the Wi-Fi, frankly, is just too dodgy and uh, my schedule is just going to be a little bit up in the air. So after Thursday, I'm going to be off for the next two weeks for my lives, but I will still connect on Instagram and on my podcasts. So please don't think I've disappeared altogether. Um, but then the next one thereafter will be on the 12th of April. So, um, yeah, so that's it. That's my news. You've just started on your MTHKI vitamins. Interesting. How are you getting on? Because I'm loving them. You saw I've got them in my, genuinely, I've got them in my travel bag. That's what I was using. And, uh, you know, when I went down to stay with Guy at the weekend, I, I just had a, a, you know, hand a hold all. And so I couldn't really take too much stuff. And that's always a good sign, isn't it? When you decide what to take and what I didn't want to be away from. And those are also things that went in my bag. Yeah, you're so right. If you have high histamine and you react to histamine, you really don't want to get bitten. And that's a sign actually of histamine intolerance. 
if you're if you're curious to know more about histamine and histamine intolerance there's really good features on this our well-being website about that um, but if you are somebody like me who comes up in a really nasty bump and it's very itchy and it's really painful and uncomfortable um, then that's a sign of histamine intolerance and of course poor Lily has a very low threshold for histamine she has to take histamine blockers we've talked about this before and if she gets bitten by mosquitoes I mean she's like almost anaphylactic you know her whole hand or arm will, will really swell so she's got to be super careful um, Min Katkin says second day for me too on the eye vitamins the eye mist is so relaxing after a day of computers oh Pen, you've been uh, suffering from migraine I'm so sorry yeah Lily's not been very well either um, yeah, Nikki just listened again to Dr. Tina Pears. She's brilliant. So there's lots, lots of resources. If you're interested in help for migraine, um, histamine, all of that, please head over to lizardwellbeing.com because there's links to podcasts, articles, lots of brilliant, brilliant academics and researchers and medics that we've spoken to over the years here with really helpful advice. That is it today. I look forward to being back with you live on Thursday. 12.30 live. Thank you for all the hearts. Lovely to see you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.